Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our viewers around the world. Wishing all a happy and productive day. I am Malok Abdullah, a fellow of APO, fellow on and former Director General of MPC, Malaysia Productivity Corporation. I will be your moderator for this session. Thank you for joining us for today's special series of APO Productivity Talks as part of the events to mark APO's 60th anniversary this year. Happy 60th anniversary, APO. In 1961, APO was established with eight founding member economies and has grown to a membership of 21 now. Over the past good 60 years, the APO has played a very significant role in promoting productivity and competitiveness in the Asia Pacific region and beyond. Through its strategized activities based on mutual cooperation amongst its 21 member economies. In 1997, APO launched its program on strengthening of NPOs, which was replaced by a more focused special national programs for member economies in 2018. Under this program, APO has assisted five member economies in developing their national productivity master plans and help three in drafting the institutional capacity development plans. These programs strengthened MPO's efforts to build up cultures of business excellence in organizations. APO is therefore a world-class contributor to sustainable social economic development through efforts to increase productivity, quality, and innovation. I would say also, APO is best in class. Today, we are honored to have with us Dr. Kamran Musa, Chief Executive of PIQC Institute of Quality, Pakistan to share his experiences and give his top talk on productivity-led world-class organizations. Salam alaikum and a very good morning, Dr. Musa. Assalamu alaikum and good morning to everyone or good evening or good afternoon, <laughs> wherever you are in different parts of the world. Yeah. Congratulations, Dr. Musa, on receiving the 2021 APO Regional Award in Thank recognition you. of your contributions to productivity and quality enhancement in Pakistan and throughout the Asia Pacific region. Once again, congratulations. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, let me briefly introduce Dr. Kamran Musa. His biodata is now on the screen. Dr. Musa has a doctorate degree in engineering management, 35 years experience in promoting productivity, quality, and business excellence. Other than being chief executive of PIQC, Institute of Quality, Dr. Musa holds many other portfolios as shown in the slide. Dr. Musa has authored five books and written many publications articles on productivity and quality. He is a real guru in productivity, quality, and business excellence. Dear viewers, before we proceed to Dr. Bruce's presentation, I would encourage you to take this opportunity to pose questions mentioning your name 
and country in the live chat box. We will try to have as many answered within this session. Now, I would like to pass over the session to Dr. Musa to deliver his presentation. Dr. Musa, the session is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Malok. And if you're Japan, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, today, my session is on uh, productivity led world class organizations. In fact, uh, I would like to address the issue of uh, more uh, on the issue of implementation of programs in the organization or in the corporate world. However, before I proceed to my lecture, uh, I would like to acknowledge APO uh, about these awards. I'm grateful to APO Japan and NPO Pakistan for considering me for the APO Regional Award. It is in fact dedicated to all those productivity experts and the professionals working in Pakistan and in the Asia Pacific region for the development and promotion of productivity, quality, and excellence. I'm really honored to have it. I would also like to uh, let you just show you the pictures from the city where I live. It is the city of Lahore or the beautiful city of Lahore. You can see with the beautiful people around it. Uh, this is basically a picture of uh, one of our events at PIQC Institute of Quality, which is actually working uh, for promoting uh, improvement and excellence, productivity and quality in the country. Uh, these are some of the uh, faculty members and also some of the participants and students uh, of uh, our institute. Okay, let me start uh, uh, my presentation. In fact, the word productivity and quality used to be different words a uh, few decades ago. In fact, they were addressed differently. They were addressed by different uh, people or professionals. Productivity, as you know, is the relationship between the amount of outputs and the amount of inputs needed to produce a product. So it is more about the speed of production or the cost of production or the cost of services which any organization is offering, whether that is a government organization or a private sector or an NGO or whatever it is. On the other side, quality is usually considered as a measure of products flawlessness and excellence. So it's all about dealing with the defects, the complaints, the rejections, the reworks uh, and so forth. However, what has happened over the last few decades is these have merged together. People or professionals working in the domain of quality know that working with quality without productivity is not sufficient. And similarly, professionals and organizations working in the domain of productivity know that just dealing with productivity is again insufficient. So these two fields have now integrated together. Lean management, lean manufacturing, um, lean manufacturing has emerged, which has now integrated with the field of quality. So the field is no more exclusively uh, about productivity or quality, but joined together as an integrated discipline. Now, as an integrated discipline, when we deal both together, Another word which has emerged over the last many years is excellence. They drive the excellence. So the word TQM used to be there. Uh, it has been evolving and revolving with many new words in the field. Excellence, build, uh, business excellence models and so forth are basically all those parameters and requirements which we see, which, re, re, which are relevant to quality and uh, productivity together. So quality and productivity drive together uh, the excellence of any organization. 
Now, what's the purpose of excellence, creating excellence or creating or improving the organizations and leading it towards the excellence is for the purpose of revenue generation or increase in the revenue generation, increase or improving the profitability of organizations or cost reductions, uh, efforts of any organization or even ensuring sustainability of processes and sustainability of systems in the organizations and also improving the customer not only relevant to the customer satisfaction but also dealing with or improving customer satisfaction towards customer loyalty and while we are doing all these things you know uh, employee satisfaction is also very important so the purpose of excellence which is driven by quality and productivity initiatives is basically to improve the level of organization, the growth, it grows the organization towards the future. Now, there are basically two approaches to improve the profits and growth of an organization. The normal traditional approach is to increase or improve the marketing. And while we improve the marketing, we increase the sale and the profitability is increased which usually revolves around 10 to 20 percent I've seen in most of the companies. There are basically the normal financial uh, structure of organization measures the direct and indirect costs of uh, the organizations and the remaining is the profit. However, it is important now and basically it's important to note that there is another very powerful approach is productivity approach. And that is to increase the productivity. And as, as I said earlier, increasing productivity does not only mean the efficiencies and cost effectiveness, but also dealing with the quality. So in that aspect, we usually have two aspects of organizations. The price of non-conformance, PONC or PONC, or the non-value added processes. While price of conformance and value-added processes are basically the basic uh, necessary elements of any organization. So price of non-conformance and non-value-added processes usually amounts to about 30 to 40 percent. In some organization, uh, it may go up to 70 to 80 percent. You know, in government sector, for example, the non-value-added processes are usually even much higher than the corporate sector. So the productivity approach is to deal with the price of non-conformances and to deal with the non-value added processes at every step in the organization or every step of the processes or the value streams uh, of the processes of any organizations. So with that aspect, productivity has now a very important role in the management aspect and strategic management uh, approach of organization. That's why it's becoming increasingly popular throughout the world, especially in the Asian region. We also come across two words which are quite uh, confusing to many people in organizations. That is, who is quality professional and quality pra practitioner or who is a productivity expert and productivity practitioner? People usually, the HODs and all the operational people usually think that quality or productivity is a specialized function of a specialized department. Now, the department, people who work exclusively uh, in the departments are basically known as professionals, quality professionals or productivity professionals. They are full time facilitators. Please note the word facilitator or coordinators. They are the quality or lean or uh, lean. I'm using it uh, for the waste, uh, waste reduction activities and industrial engineers or industrial engineering management, auditors, assessors, managers of accreditation bodies, trainers, consultant, industrial engineers, managers of testing labs and agencies are basically all those who work full time in the departments. But even a more important thing to that is the practitioner. All other people 
other than the professionals in any organization are actually the user of productivity tools. They are the users of quality tools. They are the top management, the policy makers, even of the government or service sector or manufacturing sector, the production departments, supply chain, marketing, finance, medical personnel, doctors, engineers, academicians, even managers of service organizations. So uh, these operational managers or people working in different or various operational departments usually think that these tools or expertise is only for the professionals, which is, I think, generally not true. Expertise, the role of professionals, of course, is to get the expertise. But then the role of the users is also to get the expertise because the professionals is, are actually teaching or facilitating the users to know and apply these tools in their respective departments, whether they are supply chain departments or the uh, production departments or all other operations departments. So the very important user are basically the HODs or head of departments of uh, uh, various sections or uh, segments of organizations. So it's important to note that uh, it, is, it is equally important to note that uh, to get the expertise of knowledge and implementation is the responsibilities of both the quality professionals or productivity professionals as well as the practitioners who are working in different departments. Now, people usually go to various training programs and go through it and think that their main activity is done. However, as I said initially, my, I like to focus more on the implementation aspect. So there are basically, this whole field is now an integration of many segments, like you can see on the left side of the screen. Quality management has many tools. Lean management is mostly dealing with the productivity aspects and efficiency aspects. And they are basically dealing with the waste reduction aspects. Uh, and, they, and it, it includes various tools and techniques. Uh, with all these quality management or lean management, there is a heavy duty element of statistical science. Because at this age now, uh, we are dealing with the data and all the past activities are reflected through various data. Uh, and in the emerging field is now industry 4.0. And with the industry 4.0, that is the automation and uh, robotics and all these activities and automation of machines and all that. Uh, it, there is an emerging field of quality 4.0. In quality 4.0, it is about more about the design aspects of uh, quality within the automation systems. So a lot of uh, IT, a lot of IT stuff or so programming uh, is also an important element for all the quality and productivity professionals uh, to gain expertise in. Now, when we go through various programs, and I've seen so many companies going through various uh, training programs, they go through various ISO standards like ISO 9000 and many other uh, ISO standard 27000 and uh, 29000 and so forth. Uh, there are ISO standards. There are uh, business excellence models like EFQM, European Foundation for Quality Management, Baldrige and all these Deming Awards and all these uh, awards also deal with productivity and quality aspects. Uh, there are other uh, various learning uh, components which are required uh, at different stages of organizational development programs. And those are basically the metrology, for example, the science of measurements, and that is required in the quality control systems. Uh, statistical process control is, uh, is, is a tool basically uh, for production people. And they look at the uh, sustainability or the stability of their processes uh, through various statistical charts and so forth. Lean management is about uh, the seven or eight uh, wastages 
like inventory and like uh, waiting times, uh, like all these uh, different uh, rework and all these uh, aspects. Just in time and Kanban system is, is also very important uh, for providing the material from the suppliers just uh, when it is needed during the production. SMED and TPM, like total productive maintenance, uh, Lean Six Sigma is getting very popular these days, and many people and many organizations are going through these programs. And it deals basically both with the quality and productivity aspect. Cost of quality, you know, is uh, many companies have uh, included that tool uh, to measure because their uh, routine uh, or regular financial system basically only measure uh, the financial aspect and does not deal or accurately measure the quality, cost of quality and cost of uh, conformance and cost of non-conformance and so forth. Benchmarking is also now uh, looking at the best practices around and bringing those best practices uh, in companies. Failure mode and effect analysis is about uh, risk uh, mitigations or risk removals or uh, improving the processes and uh, measuring uh, the quality and uh, uh, sustainability of the processes as well. Quality function deployment is about the, uh, is, is a tool used uh, in basically design aspects of uh, which features to design. Then other uh, tools like 5S, Kaizen, and Gamba Walks and all these are basically used in the lean management as well. And perhaps these 5S, Kaizen, and Gamba are the foundation uh, of uh, any organizations. Then there are many uh, software tools like Excel, Minitab, or Power BI, or Power Business Intelligence. Uh, they are used uh, increasingly. Uh, by these productivity professionals in order to measure the trends and aspects of long-term data. And now in the uh, latest uh, entry of Industry 4.0, uh, there's use of uh, many IT uh, software and tools and programs also like Python and uh, big data analysis, deep learning and artificial intelligence. These are coming. So for all those who are working in the automation industry or those where the machineries are getting replaced with the automatic machines uh, like drones and robotics and all these, uh, those quality and productivity professionals have to go through learning and all that. But what I want to say is uh, learning alone is not sufficient because many people uh, get an illusion after the learning that they are now ready to implement those things. Uh, in their organizations. What is important for the productivity professionals is to be good facilitators. So even the HODs, head of departments who are not good facilitators or quality experts or professionals or productivity professionals uh, who have actually gone through these learning programs, the question is how good they are in uh, providing the training how good they are in coaching. Do they have good coaching skills, training skills, consulting uh, skills, and auditing skills? Because without these, skill, uh, without these skills, uh, the professionals will not be able to develop the rest of the organization, or in other words, the users of these uh, tools. So in many companies, I've seen that uh, quality departments or productivity experts basically uh, they go through the training programs, but the problem comes when uh, this department itself uh, or the professional working in these departments, they themselves are not very good uh, trainers or coaches or consultants. So as a strategic element, uh, the top management must ensure that uh, these skills are also developed in the professionals and even in the HODs so that they can uh, develop the teams working in their departments uh, effectively. But again, the third element, which is even uh, the more important, is providing the leadership to, to these programs. Uh, like any other lean management program or JIT or Lean Six Sigma, or cost of quality or benchmarking or 5S or Kaizen, even though the department is very good in training and coaching, the question now arises, how good leadership aspect is there 
uh, in the organizations. Now, this basically deals with the change management aspects. The organizational structure, I'll be talking a little bit more on that because I'll be dealing with the implementation aspect. Uh, there are, and there should be leadership skills. And with the leadership skills, there are a lot more to do with the emotional intelligence rather than only the intelligence of the subject matters. So being very good in these tools and techniques of productivity uh, and not good in basically the emotional intelligence will weaken the leadership aspect. And another very important aspect is how good there is the productivity vision, mission, policies, and then the SOPs. People who are working in ISO environment or people who are working in various uh, uh, programs of uh, productivity uh, usually try to develop the SOPs without uh, clearly developing the vision and mission uh, of the team, of the top management team initially. Then benchmarking, going around and looking for the best practices and capturing those best practices and uh, building those in the organization. Uh, another very important aspect of leadership is how good there is teamwork, motivation and commitment in the organization. And uh, this is not by default. If you get a training, you'll be motivated or the, you will develop the commitment. It has to do a lot uh, with the various levels of uh, leadership. It's not only about the CEO's uh, vision. It's also about the combined vision uh, cascaded to various levels down to the supervisory level. Then how much of the HODs are accountable uh, for these uh, productivity uh, you know, outcomes and the role of HODs in the productivity and the data based decision making. Are people taking decision based on the data which they are using? So you can see that from this uh, slide, the implementation is not only dealing with the learning or going through the training program. It has to do with building the facilitation skills. Uh, and also developing the leadership skills in the regular HODs, uh, regular management structure of the organization. Now, another aspect is uh, I've seen through various organizations and I've learned uh, that there are various stages of successful implementation. St of course, the starting point is learning the concepts and tools, and that is the learning, the first point of uh, any program that you are going through. Of course, uh, productivity tools, there are a lot of tools. Uh, each tool may require to go through these steps, whether it is Kaizen or whether it is Lean Six Sigma or whether it is an ISO standard. The number one thing, as I said, is just going through the lean concepts, uh, the learning uh, concepts and tools. An effective learning program is the foundation, but then, People go through the whole thing without understanding the organizational behavior and culture. So a very important thing for the change management is to understand that self-assess the level of behaviors and the level of organizational culture and understanding that culture. And it is necessary, even as you go higher in the hierarchy of management, we have to understand how people behave when there is a change a requirement in the organization. So when you are trying to bring a change, how do people react and how do uh, people react? So these reactions sometimes take organizations to waste their year or two or three are wasted even in trying to understand and coping with the uh, behaviors and organizational culture. And the habits, what is culture? Culture is basically the habits of the people. So <clears throat> So if the habits of the people are not to be creative, uh, then perhaps uh, to change them to a creative mode requires a lot of uh, initiatives. So the third level, the so second level, as I said, is uh, for the management to understand the culture and then uh, work in the contextual uh, requirement because every, dip, not even every sector, but every uh, section of an organization may require a different approach in the implementation. The third aspect is 
how strong leadership roles and structure we have developed. There are basically three very important parts of the structure. That is, who is sponsoring this program? If you are trying to introduce Lean Six Sigma, for example, uh, or Kaizen, uh, or Gemba Vox and all that, there has to be some very senior person sponsoring this program. And this person has to provide all the resources and initiatives and commitment to this program and even the reward and award to this program. Those, uh, the role of sp uh, sponsorship, uh, the role of the sponsor is very important in that aspect. Then the facilitator, that may be the productivity, the industrial engineering department, or that may be the quality department, or that may be the productivity department, or business excellence department, or whoever is assigned the full-time job to facilitate all this program. And the third very important uh, component are basically uh, is to deal with the HODs or head of departments. Now, head of departments are basically the people uh, who are generally neglected and they think that it is the role of the facilitator or quality manager or productivity manager and so forth. And even the sponsor and facilitator together, they, they cannot deploy the program unless the HODs are basically the main driving force behind all this. Then the come the issue of implementation. And that is basically changing and deploying the procedure and getting the changes uh, in the SOPs and policies and so forth. The teamwork, the creativity, uh, developing the creativity to come up with the better solutions of the problems or the weaknesses of the organization, capturing the gap analysis or the weaknesses, and then doing the problem solving wherever there are problems of quality or productivity. And any, any uh, gap between the target and the current state of uh, objectives are basically uh, called uh, a problem. And then if you achieve the targets and the goals of productivity or competitiveness or profitability, then the time comes for sustainability. And for that, strong systems and audit programs uh, will work. Usually people start with the audit programs. And uh, that is usually the part of the systemic development of any organization. And as we go through the driving uh, or the, the drive for excellence through various tools of quality and productivity, we see different cultures in different sectors, like in manufacturing, uh, defense sector, government sector, uh, IT, academics in universities and schools. They're all different, uh, you know, cultures and systems and organizations. Uh, we see different cultures. So it's important for all those who are going to deploy the program to understand these cultures. And even within those cultures, the service sectors, the production circles, uh, sector or departments within even the manufacturing organizations, basically, uh, we see different cultures also. So an important aspect is to understand these cultures as well. Uh, now, going through these fundamental aspects and sharing of experiences, I like to also share one of the experience of best practices uh, of, uh, of a case example. I like to share a food company in Pakistan who have gone through a very strong program of productivity and quality improvement. This is a food company who started with a Lean Six Sigma program in 2013. And in six years, they achieved the saving of about 15.9 million US dollars. Now, the company, when they started uh, the program, they initially had uh, two departments, the QC department, which was dealing with the testing of the products and ISO 9000 department dealing with the QA, quality assurance and audits and so forth. They created the third component called continuous improvement or CI. They, uh, uh, they, they created a post of a senior manager and uh, also developed coordinators of CI coordinators in each department. And so there are uh, uh, these three. Uh, this is an additional thing they started with. And there was a steering committee uh, dealing with the continuous improvement. Now, the goals behind continuous improvement was to improve the profitability. And their major goal was to improve the productivity and improve the quality while ensuring uh, and not deteriorating in any aspect 
the customer satisfaction and employee satisfaction because many organizations when they tend to improve the profitability or productivity uh, they hamper uh, the employee satisfaction as well so this company started uh, by uh, uh, making the objective of uh, also ensuring that customer satisfaction and employee satisfaction is also part of their improvement goals so this was their organizational structure of continuous improvement they had a steering committee on continuous improvement uh, the, they had a manager uh, senior manager rather an experience a very competent person they installed uh, they called him uh, ci lead and then within each and then within each operation they had a part time continuous improvement uh, they call it lead uh, departmental lead of continuous improvement so the ci initiatives uh, basically involved lean six sigma projects in uh, production and services area or transactional areas maintenance projects kaizen events lean tools like 5s kaizen and tpm and also to implement best practices so they were their ci uh, department or the function revolves around these uh, tools and techniques uh, when they started the lean six sigma program they trained with the initial fundamental trainings uh, to 95% of their management were trained uh, they trained uh, 120 they were had about 2 or 2, uh, 250 people from the management and about 1000 people or so uh, from, from other area non management area Uh, they trained as a lean six sigma yellow belt to 120 people lean six sigma green belt to 60 people lean six sigma black belt to 11 people and lean six sigma champion to 20 top management people and other supportive te- tools which were required there so uh, in 6 years uh, they carried out about 209 projects in 2013 13 improvement projects 214 because this whole system works with the projects concept while you are doing your regular production you are also dealing with the improvement projects making various teams uh, productivity teams or process improvement teams or lean six sigma teams or kaizen teams or quality circles these are various types of teams uh, with little bit differences in the contents uh, of uh, the tools that they are usually using so in 2014 25 projects 2015 29 2016 uh, 41 and so forth so average projects per year were 27 and the sa- savings as you can see on the right part of the chart in 2015 2.4 million dollars in 2016 3 million 2.7 uh, 2017 3.7 million and so forth uh, cumulative uh, saving they got of 15.98 million dollars uh and the nature of projects uh, they had about 115 projects of energy optimization and as you can see on this chart uh 48 projects for maintenance cost uh, reduction because uh, energy is the highest cost at least in this part of the world uh 24 yield improvement and waste minimization projects uh, and then other projects related to chemical supplies uh, packing material logistic customer services safety and so forth they started with the manufacturing projects and then they went into the supply chain and finally they went into the other business functions and service sector of the area uh, cultural transformation they had a structure program for continuous improvement uh, they they got better leadership they were reported and they are very comfortable that their uh, leadership for productivity and quality improved better process and systems approach uh, better discipline and team approach to problem solving better use and interpretation of data and decision making from top to down and similarly the savings as i said 15.19 uh, 15.9 million first pass yield uh, compliance raised from 92% to 98% 15% improvement in yield 10% increase in plant energy uh, and similarly uh, various achievement of excellence in planning maintenance warehouse and so forth similarly in automobile uh, plant uh, another case uh, of 30 years of uh, outstanding tqm uh, which included their productivity aspect uh, they had quality circle kaizen jit 5s tpm statistical process control and the focus was on quality productivity uh, this is an automobile manufacturing plant uh, safety customer and employee satisfaction and 50 to 60 quality circle a year they conduct and 8000 to 9000 kaizen this is their kaizen convention they motivate other people to take part in it uh, these this is uh, also their jury 
you know so they held uh, various conventions every year these are the pictures of some of the teams uh, at the worker level also and supervisory level as well so uh, finally uh, to be successful uh, we really need a real intent uh, we need uh, productivity leadership uh, organizations lead uh, need uh, teamwork uh, usually they don't consider it uh, very serious things but it uh, turns out to be very important thing uh, they need structured program like uh, six sigma or kaizen and so forth uh, they want learning organizations to continuous learning because uh, step by step they will learn go into the various tools and techniques uh, they require good facilitation and experts uh, continuity and sustainability is required through building a strong systemic approach so with this i like to thank you very much and wish you all the success uh, due to the shortage of time i uh, uh, i cannot go into the further detail uh, we'll have a question answer if anyone uh, wants to ask uh, any question later on they can i have my email is there they can also ask uh, through the email as well so malok uh, thank you very much this is about uh, the presentation <laughs> thank you thank you dr musa that was a very insightful presentation summarizing productivity and competitiveness strategies that can be adopted and adapted by organizations to achieve world class you have mentioned two best practice cases that was very good where tangible savings was very significant but there are also as you mentioned intangibles which are important better employee satisfaction and discipline better teamwork i think these are very important and significant uh, intangibles too other than the tangibles well ladies and gentlemen i would like to take this opportunity to briefly share the malaysia experience in promoting and developing organizations to become world class 5 years ago in 2017 the malaysia productivity blueprint was launched with the tagline driving productivity of the nation the malaysia Productiv productivity blueprint has five key strategic thrusts to raise productivity and address the key challenges the first thrust is building high skilled workforce and talents building the skilled human capital the second thrust digitization digital transformation and innovation improving the business process the third thrust is private sector driven with close partnership with government agencies there are now nine productivity nexus which were formed to spearhead the uh, productivity drive and they are chaired by captains of industry and productivity champions a real private sector driven initiative with close collaboration with government agencies the fourth trust is forging a robust ecosystem addressing regulatory constraints that affect cost of doing business and those that hinders productivity in two days time that is the 25th november there will be the malaysia convention on good Reg regulatory practices grp which will be launched by the prime minister of malaysia and during this convention there will be presentations of best good regulatory practices by organizations that have shown results the fifth thrust is securing a strong implementation mechanism to a nationwide productivity movement to inculcate a productive mindset Ladies and gentlemen, MPC has also started 
the Malaysia Productivity Innovation Class, MPIC, for organizations that have achieved a certain standard of business excellence. Using the assessment based on business excellence framework, similar to that of APOs and MPOs, the members are selected to be in the MPIC. The aim is to nurture this organization to achieve business excellence. Also facilitating best practice sharing amongst its members. At this point, uh, I would like to suggest that viewers, after today's talk, to share this productivity talk link and other APO talk links to your friends, colleagues, and customers. We help to disseminate the good practices and increase productivity of the region. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in ending, uh, I have a message to all viewers that is, do think big to be world class, but start small. That is, for example, like what has been mentioned, to start with 5S or Kaizen so that we get the company-wide involvement in the productivity improvement. And we have to act fast. Do it now and start now. Like people say, just do it. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to share the following productivity taglines. Productivity drives economic development. It boosts economic growth. Productivity begins with you and me. Push for productivity, go for quality. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I think now we will start our Q&A session. Dear viewers, please feel free to post your questions in the live chat box that is uh, being provided. So thank you very much. Uh, and to Dr. Busa, let's start with our first question. Sure. <laughs> As an APO Regional Awardee 2021, how do you think this will help you in expanding the knowledge on productivity methodology, tools, and techniques? Dr. Musa. Uh, actually, uh, APO is a premium organization working uh, in so many countries in Asia. It's a unique platform uh, yes. for mutual exchange of information and learning from each other. And I think this platform has provided us uh, a good forum where we can exchange uh, views, uh, exchange the best practices, and benchmark each other and learn from each other. Uh, and number two, uh, uh, and this activity, uh, I, I can see that uh, APO has various conferences, exchange programs uh, between different countries, which will definitely, uh, uh, you know, can be very useful. And secondly, I think uh, such awards provide impetus to the government at the government level as well. And uh, I'm sure that uh, NPO Pakistan uh, will be now uh, very much active and uh, <laughs> me and with the support of all those wo people working in this domain, uh, this area will be highlighted at the government level and uh, we'll be able to influence uh, those areas which are weak and can be improved at the government level as well. Very good. And we, both, we look forward more to your continuing contribution to yeah. product and quality in this region, Dr. Musa. Hopefully, yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, there's another question. As a chairman and board member of various organizations, what are your strategic recommendations to promote productivity and quality? Yeah, I think this is uh, a very important aspect uh, what I've seen in the boards is uh, sometimes a very weak uh, vision and mission of the board itself. 
who's driving the whole organization so the prime factor i would see is to develop a strong vision and a mission which will lead to a better strategic plan where productivity and quality will be a tangible element because i've seen in many areas they are considered as a side activity so unless this board understand itself the quality and also how they can improve the whole organization through various tools you know uh, they can uh, be very useful secondly i think the resource allocation for productivity and quality improvement tools infrastructure software uh, are usually neglected uh, by the board so they they usually focus on the infrastructure the technologies uh, the people uh, even, even training of the people but in their operational areas so the board should also look at uh, basically and provide the resources uh, and various uh, for various initiatives to be addressed by the companies and thirdly i think uh, most boards i have seen they depend on the performance evaluation through audit programs i think they forget the reward and award programs uh, what is important is for the board to promote and uh, to uh, to motivate people in the area of uh, by providing better awards and rewards to people who are doing uh, better activities uh, in the organization and uh, let that be structured programs and awards not just once in a while but a regular program uh, you know uh, addressing and be part of those uh, rewards and award programs thank you dr musa the third question is in your view what are the most important steps to be taken by any organization to become globally competitive yeah uh let me first of all uh, differentiate between two words uh, competitive analysis and comparative analysis you know we usually use the word competitive advantages by comparing the firm with the other uh, uh, firms uh, competing firms you know comparative advantages are those advantages uh, basically which are due to your location so if i am near to a hill maybe i uh, i will reduce my price because of the for a cement factory for example uh, the location can be very uh, important thing they can control the prices through various by its location uh, by the certain type of skills in different cities you know there are certain cities uh, in our country also for example sialkot is rich in the skill sets of surgical instruments and uh, uh, other things so if you open uh, a factory in uh, karachi or lahore in another city where there are not much skills available uh, you know you will have a disadvantage of uh, even the competitive advantage so my first point is not to neglect the comparative advantages due to your location or to to the natural resources available uh, to you because of the location or uh, the infrastructure available around you uh, the second important thing is uh, uh, to provide uh, to look at the supply chain as we are getting into the more uh, globally internet and all these things uh the any anybody near to you is not any more uh you know can be an advantage we have to find things uh from different areas we have to learn about the supply chain uh techniques uh, better how to deal with them and so forth and the last thing i think to be globally competitive is not to neglect and be proactive in the use of advanced technologies there are so many in industry 4.0 there are many companies now i see not only in pakistan but in the region they are adding new technologies which are robotics but they are not one or two times more competitive but they are 100 times maybe at times 80 times or 90 times more competitive uh, you know in packaging and other stuff uh, like that so the the use of technology and investment in technology is also another a uh, very important thing which uh, we should not neglect i think good thank you the next one uh, dr musa yeah productive and quality are considered critical for sme development 
which are the most important productivity tools and techniques SME should adopt for continuous growth and achieving excellence? Yeah. One of the difference uh, between uh, SMEs and large organization is their management structure. Uh, in SMEs, uh, the structures are basically web structure. Uh, the owners or the owner managers are basically dealing with so many things. They are uh, actually multitasking people. So they, they have so much time goes into the multitasking and so forth. So as a result, they can't go into the depth of various tools. Uh, so in SMEs, I would suggest uh, the fundamentals are very important, the Kaizen, the 5S, and the creativity of these things. And that should be learned and taught and practiced by each individual in the organization, not just the management, you know. And once that culture is there, you know, it will be easy for those cultures to expand into the medium organization and from the medium organizations to large organization, because in that way, uh, the delegation and leadership uh, will become. So uh, delegation is yet another important thing uh, which is uh, usually uh, missing in the small industries which we get into the large uh, organizations and so forth. Yeah, Dr. Musa, I do agree with you. you know, the uh, 5S and Kaizen is a good start to build the foundation to move towards excellence. Yeah. The next question that I have is what specific measures should be taken by industrial associations and stakeholders in developing countries to support SMEs and boost their productivity? This, I think, is a very big potential every country is having. These trade associations, chambers of commerce, you know, sector-specific associations usually deal, especially in the developing country, with the political environment and so forth and dealing with the taxations and all these things. Uh, many of them, they forget the role of productivity and quality improvement of the entire segment. Uh, I would suggest basically uh, three things I would suggest. The first thing is sharing of best practices. Within the whole sector, uh, you know, various organizations are working, but then they are not sharing uh, the best practices to each other. Uh, they should develop forums uh, where best practices are being shared. Second thing is they should provide effective quality and productivity tools, training and educational program, you know, there's uh, to their sector specific to the sectorial. Uh, so productivity related, for example, in healthcare, productivity related to defense sector, Productivity related to textile sector then comes into it. So these organizations or associations are very uh, suitable to uh, build that uh, knowledge domain. And the third uh, thing is to regulate uh, through industrial and to promote industrial standards uh, or uh, quality standards within that sector. Uh, and finally, maybe uh, I think uh, the forums for uh, awards and rewards of best practices, you know, within their own uh, associations and sectors who are performing best in terms of quality and not just the highest uh, outputs or production, but also uh, those organizations who are uh, providing better quality uh, and productivity. Thank you, Dr. Musa. Thank you again for giving us your insights and answering the questions. I'm My sure pleasure. that our viewers in APO member economies and beyond have gained a lot from your experiences and your presentation and sharing of best practices. Before we end this session, do you have any final thoughts for our viewers? Dr. Musa. Uh, I think as I've gone through organizations and organizations, I think one of the most important thing is uh, a subject called learning to learn. We have to identify, we have to make organizations learning organizations. If we are continuously learning, then, then we will be developing better uh, implementation program. But we, if we slow down in learning, actually stagnancy comes in. 
so i think the best thing is to focus around the organizational culture and that can be through better and regular learning activities that's it i thank think thank you once again dr musa we really appreciate having you here today my pleasure i would also like to thank our viewers for the participation and the apo secretariat for its technical support and assistance wishing every one of us continued good health and prosperity stay safe and let's make today better than yesterday and tomorrow better than today thank you i hope to see you again in the next apo p talk see you